as we can see in this slide, uh, the face is full of muscles. Muscles are usually concentrated around the openings of the face, mainly the two orbits and the mouth. All these muscles are supplied by the facial nerves, one on the right and one on the left. One of the common diseases in our society and other societies is what is called facial palsy. Now, if we look at this person uh, and uh, look at both sides, the right and left, we can see that there is a difference in appearance between the right and the left. Uh, both sides, each is supplied by the facial cranial nerve and it is cranial nerve number seven. Here is the normal side where you can see that the mouth is pulled towards the left of this patient because the muscles are working. If we look at the creases of the forehead, there are creases while on the right uh, the creases have disappeared. Uh, the eyebrow on the left is raised and there is a fold between the nose and the angle of the mouth called the nasolabial fold is very prominent while it is not on the right. So the right facial nerve is not working and the the muscles of the right side of the face are not working. This is called facial palsy. These are eight images of a person where in each uh, image he is using uh, a specific muscle of the facial expression and few of them he is using more than one. This person is raising his eyebrows therefore you can see creases on the eyebrow and he is using uh, a muscle called occipital frontalis which is uh, covering the frontal part of uh, the face and it has another component at the back and when this muscle contracts the eyebrows are raised and there are creases on the forehead. This is the occipital frontalis muscle where you can see that there is posteriorly a fleshy part of the muscle attached to the external surface of the occipital bone and this is the part of the muscle that is called occipitalis. Then this muscle will form an aponeurosis, a flat tendon uh, over the skull and this is called Galia aponeurotica and then as this muscle comes anteriorly and inserts into the skin and this part of this muscle is called the frontalis part of the occipital frontalis muscle. If you look at this person to your left, you can see that he is closing his mouth and he is using this muscle which is called orbicularis oris. It is a circular muscle uh, like a sphincter around the mouth and uh, we test it when you ask the person to whistle and this movement is produced by 
muscle called orbicularis oris. Uh, this person is doing what? He is wrinkling his uh, forehead between the eyebrows. And uh, if we look to your right, there is a muscle in the middle, just superior to the nose. And uh, this is called corrugator supercilii. And when this muscle contracts, uh, This is the appearance of this person, uh, a look of disgust. In this image, we can see that uh, on the right of this person, the upper lip uh, on the right has been elevated. And this movement is done by two muscles. Uh, coming from the zygomatic bone, the superior one is the zygomaticus minor, and the inferior one is zygomaticus major. They raise the right half of the lip up. This is the movement of uh, a smile where the two angles of the mouth are pulled apart and this movement is done by a muscle called rhizorius. It, it is pulling the angle of the mouth horizontally to the right and to the left. This is a look where the lower lip has been pulled down and this is done by a muscle called depressor anguli oris. The two angles of the mouth are pulled down. When this person was asked to show his teeth or smile, he is using uh, more than one muscle. He is using the levator labii superioris. He is using the uh, risorius and he is using the uh, depressor anguli inferioris. So it is a combination of uh, group of muscles. This forceful closure of the right eye is done by a muscle called orbicularis oculi, a circular muscle that surrounds the opening of the orbit. 